Welcome to this edition of Atlanta Live. I'm Ann White, and we have a very special guest with us here today, someone who has a very courageous faith, a courageous faith that's going to inspire you and I to also be courageous in our faith as well. Join me in welcoming Ken Ham. He's author, president, and founder of Answers in Genesis. Ken, thanks so much for being here today. Thank you, Anne. Great to be with you. Boy, you have got such a courageous faith and have for a long time. And I know this started back with your parents because there's that great story of how your mom encouraged you and inspired you and how your dad kind of really encouraged you in the book of Genesis. So speak to that a little bit. Sure. In fact, uh, I was born in Australia. I hope you can tell from my I think I can tell. deep southern yeah. accent, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> really deep. But I was born in Australia and brought up in a Christian home. And you know, in mm -hmm. Australia, that, that is a special blessing. because About 20 million people, probably less than 1% are born again Christians. Wow. And my dad and mum, such dedicated Christians. My mum is 88 years old, actually. Oh, what a blessing. And my father went to be with the Lord just over 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. He was a school teacher. He was a headmaster of equivalent of sort of elementary, middle school. Uh -huh. But he was also one who just loved the Word of God and really devoured the Word of God. He told me that his father died when he was 16 years old, mm -hmm. so he didn't have an earthly father then, so he turned to the words of his heavenly father. Wow. And he read them over and over and over again. And he hated compromise, and he was all the time looking at what the liberal critics were saying to try and undermine God's Word, and mm -hmm. he was answering those. And so we were brought up in a home with a dad and wow. mum who stood in the authority of the Word of God. They had a real heart for reaching kids with the Gospel. Mm -hmm. They would invite missionaries in and have special missionary programs, and then they would invite uh, young people from the area. There was in the days when there weren't any seatbelt laws, you know, and right. you put 20 kids in a car and squash them all in and, yep. and take them to a Gospel outreach. But it was at one of those programs that my parents were responsible for running that the missionary had a challenge for those who wanted to be a missionary for the Lord. Mm -hmm. And with what my parents had taught me about the Word of God, I went forward at that meeting. And that was that time, I believe, I was saying, yes, what I've been taught about the Scriptures, yes, I, I, I have my faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to be a missionary for the Lord and go where He wants me to go. Didn't know that would mean coming to America. Right. But... And, you know, the Lord really equipped me through my parents because as I became a science teacher mm -hmm. uh, in public schools in Australia, the kids were asking skeptical questions about the Bible. And mm -hmm. my father had really taught apologetics. Mm -hmm. You know, the word apologetics doesn't mean you apologize for your faith. And that always twisted me up a little bit. But I, I did the same thing. I have a real passion for the next generation. Right. I have a real passion for helping them believe and understand in the inerrancy and the infallibility of God's Word. And so apologetics is something that we all need to really be engaged in. And I'm just fascinated with all of the books and resources that you offer for that very thing. Well, you know, 1 Peter 3.15 says, always be prepared to give yes. an answer or defense. And that word answer or defense is translated from the Greek word apologia, from which we get a word apologetics. Right. And so our ministry is an apologetics ministry. And, you know, the, that bent the Lord gave me in regard to that and desire in that area really came because of my father who was always teaching us not just what the Bible says mm -hmm. but how to answer liberal critics. And one of the problems that I've seen today is that many Christian homes and many churches don't teach the coming generations apologetics. And right. so the world is able to get them to doubt the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And that's why I have this big emphasis on apologetics. Now, I remember the first time... I was a science teacher and one of the students said, Sir, we heard you're a Christian, but how can you believe the Bible when we know it's not true? And wow. why do you know it's not true? Because of what's taught in our textbooks about evolution and millions of years. And the Lord had enabled me a few years before to obtain some materials that had answers in them, books by Dr. Henry Morris, the late Dr. Henry uh -huh. Morris and Dr. John Whitcomb and other materials from around the world because my father saw that what was happening in the schools was causing students to doubt the book of Genesis. Absolutely. And, and so he recognized and he had taught me, you know, if you don't believe Genesis, how can you believe the rest of the Bible? Because all of our doctrines, the doctrine of marriage is founded mm -hmm. in Genesis. Mm -hmm. Why we're sinners mm -hmm. comes from Genesis. Mm -hmm. And so we were searching for answers in regard to these issues. And he was fascinated by the flood of Noah and the creation account. And when those answers came along, it meant a lot to him. And it meant a lot to me. And I was able to give those answers to the students. And the Lord used all of that to uh, enable me to start a ministry in our house in Australia. Wow. We came over to America in 1987, worked with Dr. Henry Morris and Dr. Dwayne Gish yep. for seven years. And then 
because of a burden the Lord had given me in my public school teaching days when I took students to secular museums, mm -hmm. and it was all from an evolutionary perspective, I really had a burden to build a creation museum, mm -hmm. to tell the truth. Mm -hmm. And so we moved to northern Kentucky and in 2007 opened the world's largest, very unique creation museum. 2.6 million people now have been yeah. through the creation museum. And, and I'm one of those. And you're one of those. And the new <laughs> project, the new project now, because we want to reach more people with the message of the a truth of God's word. Absolutely, birth. absolutely. And I've always heard that a little bit of science will lead you away from, can lead you away from God, but a lot of science will lead you right back to Him. And so you guys are really doing a wonderful job, a courageous job, to stand up against the culture and against the norm in our society today, and say, you know, here's the evidences that you can see for yourself, you can learn for yourself, you can touch and feel. And the Creation Museum has, has done just that. You've it, given it, a place where people can come to families, and there's even more going on than is. that. Okay, so tell us about that project, because it's so exciting. You've got some amazing pictures here about Noah's Ark. So tell well, us a little bit about how that came to be. You know, the, the, the Creation Museum is actually a walk through the whole Bible with mm -hmm. animatronic dinosaurs and animatronic people and life-size exhibits and planetarium and special effects right. theater. And one of the exhibits, we built 1% of Noah's Ark. Mm -hmm. And we have an animatronic Noah. We have a Noah that answers your questions and so on. And it's one of the popular exhibits there at the Creation mm -hmm. Museum. But over the years, a lot of people have wondered about the Ark and you know, have we found the ark and would it be fascinating right. to find it? And some people have said, what if we were to build Noah's ark according to the mentions in the Bible? And a lot of people who've seen that exhibit at the Creation Museum mm -hmm. have said, wow, we'd love to see Noah's ark. It was interesting, before we actually finished the Creation Museum, uh, back in 2004, 2005, we had written down that, hey, let's build a life-size ark mm -hmm. after the Creation Museum to reach more people with the message of God's Word and the Gospel. Mm -hmm. And in 2016, July 7, we're going to be opening the most authentic life-size replica of Noah's Ark in the world. It's being built 45 minutes from the Creation Museum, 3.1 million board feet of timber, wow. the biggest what's called timber-framed building using big heavy timbers, mortise and tenon joints, biggest timber-framed building in the world. It'll be a world-class attraction, and the research we've done wow. indicates up to 2 million people a year, a year, 2 million. Wow. Think of a Christian facility I, but I believe it. that stands on the Word of God and 132 mm -hmm. ark bays with exhibits answering all sorts of questions about Noah's Ark and how he could fit mm -hmm. the animals on board, but also presenting that as Noah and his family went through a door to be saved, we need to go right. through a door, and that door is the Lord Jesus Christ. Ken, why don't you tell us a little bit about the exhibit bays in the Ark? I hear they're fascinating. They are. In fact, you know how I describe the Ark Encounter, the, the life-size Noah's Ark? Mm -hmm. I, I say there's exhibits within an exhibit within an exhibit because the Ark itself is an exhibit, mm -hmm. if, if nothing else, right. to give the size of the Ark right. just to stand there. People are going to come just to see that. Uh, absolutely. When you walk inside and you see the timber, you see the craftsmanship of the Amish craftsmen that put this together. It's just amazing. Mm -hmm. That in itself is an exhibit. Because mm -hmm. you know what it makes you think about? How did Noah do this? And you know a lot of Christians have an evolutionary view of history because mm -hmm. they think, well, Noah couldn't have done this. I mean, you know, he wouldn't have had the tools we have today and so on. And how could Noah do that? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah. We don't even know how people built some of those big stone monuments and the buildings pyramids. in South America or the pyramids. Right. We don't even know how they did that. And you see, when, when you go into the Bible in Genesis 4, for instance, talks about there within a few generations, people were workers of bronze mm -hmm. and iron mm -hmm. and making musical instruments. Mm -hmm. Noah was 600 years old when the flood came. Mm -hmm. I mean, you think of people like Thomas Edison's and Newton's and so on living for hundreds of years and... We've been right. affected by a lot of the curse, and, right. and, and so we're not as, as good as we, we used to right. be. Right. Noah was probably so much more intelligent, probably had a technology we'd be jealous but of. But he had a little bit and longer time than you've had to build your ark as well, right? <laughs> well, he, he, he lived a lot longer than we do. He did. And, and so inside, we're going to have a series of exhibits to challenge people. Don't think of Noah as some, you know, a, a less intelligent person in an right. evolutionary progression. Highly intelligent. And, and, and he, you know, when God told him to build the ark, he didn't say, well, how do I do that? I, I right. can't do that. I, it, it just seems like, oh, okay. 
uh, yeah, I can do that. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to have a series of exhibits about Noah to challenge people to think in terms of biblical history from a biblical right. perspective. And so it will be about Noah's life and he was a highly intelligent person. You know, he might have already been building ships. He could have lived on the coast. That's true. God could have prepared him. You know how God uses... Even in our lives, mm -hmm. the circumstances we go through for the ministries he calls us to. Absolutely. He wouldn't he have prepared, prepared mm -hmm. Noah? Mm -hmm. And so we're going to challenge people about that. You know, there are flood legends in cultures all over the world. There are. I've read often about that, that there are flood legends in and, other religions. And, and, and there's many elements similar to the account in the Bible. Because after the Tower of Babel, when God gave mm -hmm. different languages, as people moved out around the earth's surface... They took that account of the flood with them, changed it. Mm -hmm. There's similar elements there, but the real record's in the Bible. We'll have right. a series of exhibits on that. We'll have an exhibit about the Ice Age, which came as a result of the flood uh -huh. after the flood. We'll talk about how Noah could feed all the kinds of land animals on board the ark. We're going to have all sorts of cages and different sizes and sculptures of animals. Wow. We're going to have a major petting zoo outside the ark with lots of animals that live today as well. And then we're, we're going to have... Uh, exhibits uh, dealing with how do we know the Bible's true. In fact, you know the, right. the Green family from Hobby Lobby Absolutely. who are opening the Museum Deep of the Green. Bible in Washington, mm -hmm. D.C.? Mm -hmm. They put in a little museum of the Bible at the Creation Museum, just oh. a mini one, mm -hmm. and they're loaning us more artifacts for some of the bays at uh, the Ark as well. Oh, and so, exactly. and we're going to have a series of exhibits on how do we know the Bible's true, the doors in Scripture. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the door to the sheepfold, right. the door to the tomb that was rolled mm -hmm. aside. God's son steps into history and said, I am the door. Yeah. God had Noah build one door in the side of the ark. Mm -hmm. They had to go through the one door to be saved. God shut the door. Right. There's only one way to heaven. There's only one door to heaven mm -hmm. through the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to mm -hmm. challenge people like that. In the bow on the third deck, there's going to be a series of panels with life-size figures on them, uh -huh. college students. Uh-huh who are questioning about how do we know there's a God? How can we trust the Bible? And there's going to be someone there answering them. It's like walking wow. through the pages of a book and, and it's like going through this and you say, I want, I want to see what happens next. I want to see what happens next. And people will walk through and it's going to really show that we can give answers and challenge them that they need to put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. So it's an evangelistic arc. Yes. We have many, many other exhibits too, 132 exhibit bays. And the, the talent that we have a number of them have worked in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And you know what they've said to me? They said, this is better than Hollywood. Mm -hmm. The quality of this, the dioramas that we have, it's going to be astounding. People are going to be blown away. Nobody's ever done this wow. before. And they're going to come in. The ark itself is going to be a witness. They're going to come in and look mm -hmm. inside the ark and be amazed. And then the exhibit bays, I believe it's going to be one of the greatest Christian outreaches of this era of history. I can certainly see how it would be. And you've obviously put together an amazing team of not only craftsmen, but there's so much behind the scenes, oh, I imagine, with engineers and, you know, everything. There's, there's probably 300 or so people right now wow. with, with just the people that we have at Answers in Genesis, let alone a lot of the other contractors, the, the people behind the scenes, the sculptors, the fabricators, right. the artists... Uh, people working on all those exhibit bays and then there's the people that are installing things down at the Ark and then yeah. there's the rest of our ministry and all the people that are involved in various ways and then there's the Amish craftsmen and then there's all the contractors. There's it's hundreds of people place working over on there. <laughs> we, we have up to 120 to 150 personnel wow. on site at the Ark, the contractors uh -huh. and our own installers working every day. It is an incredibly busy site. This wow. is going to be a world attraction. In fact, our researchers said... Outside of the Disney's, the Universal's, mm -hmm. he mm -hmm. believes this is going to be the greatest attraction in America once it's open. I think I read something where you can see it. I'm sure you'll be able to see it as you fly over it, but you know, I'm sure oh, from a distance oh, you'll be massive. able to see this arc. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Well, thanks so much for sharing all that because it's. I think it encourages us and, and helps us to understand the magnitude of this dream and vision that God gave you. And you know what else is interesting, Anne? is that the Lord led us to a property, 800 acres, mm -hmm. right at an interchange, right on Interstate 75, the second busiest north-south interstate wow. in America, halfway wow. between Cincinnati and Lexington, 45 minutes from the Creation Museum. What a strategic place to be. Mm -hmm. Even that is a miracle. Mm -hmm. I, and, and think about what the Scripture says about the days of Noah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. You know, the days of Noah and, and uh, pointing towards the coming judgment and so on. Right. I mean, when you look at the world and the wickedness today, mm -hmm. it almost seems like we could be describing the days of Noah. Absolutely. What a time to build an ark as a witness to the world. It starts raining, that's where I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> It won't rain next time the judgment's by fire, by the exactly. way. Exactly, it is. I mean, we'll right. get rain, right. it won't be a global flood, put it that way. <laughs> Amen. And I think this is a good point, Ken, because I want to share that video that uh, we have with our audience to see this under construction. Now, it's opening up July 7th, and we're going to talk a little bit right. about that here in just a few minutes, about the importance of that date, because there is some, yep. there's a significance yep. to that date, and there's more to come. But we're going to show some pictures, so take a look at this video and take a look at the pictures of the Ark Encounter. You're not going to want to miss this. It's amazing. Okay, so before we took that short break, Ken, we were talking about the date, July 7th. Mm -hmm. So tell our audience a little bit about why July 7th. Well, we're looking at our construction schedules and trying to figure out when we would actually open mm -hmm. uh, the life-size Noah's Ark to the public. And we had a press conference and had a lot of secular media there down at the Ark site standing on the platform. The Ark is built 15 feet above the ground and it right. really is a massive structure. I mean, it stands basically eight stories from the ground. Wow. It's a massive structure. And there were all there and the cameras rolling and so on. And I said to them, well, as we were deciding on the date, we read in the Bible in Genesis 7-7 that Noah and his family entered the ark. We said now, we thought that would fit with our construction schedule to open it on the 7th of the 7th. Wow. Because Genesis 7-7 is when Noah and his family entered the ark. So on the 7th of the 7th, 2016, the public can now enter the ark. You know what's fascinating about that? What's that? The secular media love that 
and they printed Genesis 7-7. I love and that. I even saw some articles even before we interviewed this week where they printed Genesis 7-7. So how do you get the secular media to print God's word? You announce you're going to open the ark well, on the 7th of the 7th. Exactly. And God has such a sense of humor. I mean, don't you know he's just sitting up there, I'm going to slip this in, and he has given you such a vision such a creative vision, but you've taken it and you've gone with it and you've driven this thing. Um, it's going to be absolutely amazing. Now, when y'all open it up, I also noticed that for the first 40 days and 40 nights, it's going to be open. And then from that point on, on August 16th, it'll go to just being open during the, during day, the day, for daytime hours. So and talk about that a little bit. Well, we were looking at the fact that if you consider up to 2 million people a year will uh -huh. come, I mean, there's going to be thousands of people coming every day. And right. opening midsummer, a lot of people from all over the world are going to come. We've had people contact us, media from all over the world. Right. In fact, there's media in other parts of the world that have said this is going to be one of the tourist destinations for 2016. Because it's an architectural wonder and an engineering wonder when you see it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's fascinating. I mean, 70 to... Uh, 100 or so Amish craftsmen have been involved in just building the timber frame wow. structure itself. And so... A very, very unique structure. And we were looking at what happens if too many people turn up because the research has indicated you could get too many people on some days. Right. And so, again, we're reading the Bible. Yeah. You know, the, the 40 days and 40 nights of rain it talks about in Genesis. Right. And one of our staff said, what if we had 40 days and 40 nights of daytime entry and nighttime entry? And that way people could come during the day or come at night. And actually, we have now opened up even people can reserve their place in history by even getting their tickets online yeah. at arkencounter.com. And we've noticed around 30% or so uh, are coming for the evening time. So it shows us that we are going to be able to mm -hmm. have people come daytime and evening and that'll distribute the crowds and that will really help. We can actually, uh, actually cope with, we believe, up to 16,000 people a day wow. at the Ark. That's wow. how big it is. And... Even the, the exit stairs that are in the towers, they're permitted to exit 10,000 people at one time. Not that we're going to have that many in the ark at one right. time. But if, but if it's necessary. But that's how, wow. that's how big it is. And we had to have exit stairs to sure. actually exit 10,000 people. Wow. Wow. That's absolutely amazing. And what I also find fascinating about this is when you tie it back to the Bible, and y'all do at the Creation mm -hmm. Museum and at mm -hmm. the Ark Encounter, I know you do, and you tie it back to God's Word is so amazing in that he had de details down about the ark in there that made, gave you guys the blueprint for building this. So when people see it, they'll be able to see a structure that was really God's design in the first place. And, and you know, in and real life, this how is, amazing. This is, is a reason why I believe this is so important too. Because if you look up a lot of books that children have, uh -huh. even books from Christian bookstores, might I say, right. and even kindergarten walls in churches, sure. they have pictures of Noah's Ark looking like this overloaded bathtub with giraffes sticking about the, <laughs> out the chimney, about to sink at any moment. Exactly, that's and true. You know, I it, hadn't thought it, about it, that. It really makes children think in terms of a cute little fairy tale ark. Right. I've already had non-Christians high up in the entertainment industry in America right. who have taken down to the ark construction site they stood in front of this massive structure, looked up at it, and they looked at me and they said, wow, I didn't know Noah's Ark was so big. You don't think about and it. And that gives me opportunity to say, hey, you know, one of the exhibits we have in there is to explain to people that God sent Noah two of each kind, mm -hmm. not species, right. kind right. of land-dwelling, everything animal. Right. He didn't need all the species of dogs, just two dogs. Right. Not all the species of elephants, just two elephants. And what's going to happen is that it opens up conversations, and I've had even those non-Christians say, well, that's interesting. You mean he could have fitted the animals on board? Because one of the mm -hmm. statements we hear over and over again is, there's no way Noah could have fitted all the species on mm -hmm. board. But see, he could fit the kinds, the representatives of the kinds of land animals, and we're going to have exhibits showing that. And for children, when they come there, and you know the shuttles take them from the parking area down a valley, so we take them out of the modern world, mm -hmm. And you go down this beautiful valley and across a creek and come up and suddenly you're in Noah's world. Wow. And they see that ark. They're going to... It's a jaw-dropping wow experience. Factor. It is truly and that. And they're going to stand there and, wow, it's not like that little bathtub ark with the right. drafting out the <laughs> chimney. Wow, this was a real ship. This really happened. Wow. And that's the message we want to get to people. And you see, that's why we call it Ark Encounter. 
Yes. We want people to come and have an encounter with Noah's Ark, mm -hmm. in so doing have an encounter with the Bible, right. and in so doing have an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. Ken, that is absolutely incredible. Now, you've got so much more because you've been at this for many years on apologetics and writing books. I've uh, taught a lot through the book of Genesis and I've used a lot of your material in doing so because there's some fascinating information. So our audience can also find out about AnswersInGenesis.org, correct? AnswersInGenesis.org is uh -huh. our and mother website, if you like to call right, it. Right, right. It's yeah. our main website, AnswersInGenesis.org. And they can find a lot of the books and resources there on apologetics, on Genesis, on all different things. I mean, there's tons of topics. Just name a few there, off the top is. of your head. Well, the biggest selling creation apologetics books in the world yeah. are the Four Answers books. Right. And the reason I want to emphasize that is because those books have 130 of the top questions we've been asked mm -hmm. as we travel around the world. We just had one of our speakers over in India and Dubai. Right. And he came back and he said to me, Ken, you're right. Uh, they ask the same questions over there as they do in America. Mm -hmm. They ask the same questions in the Dominican Republic. Mm -hmm. They ask the same questions in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. They ask the same questions in Canada or Australia. Right. You know, wherever I've been in the world for the past 37 years, whenever you bring up that you're on about the Bible, you're on about the message of the gospel, you're on about Christianity, we hear the same basic questions. But wait a minute, we live in a scientific age. Science has disproved the Bible. How can you believe the Bible? Carbon-14 has disproved the Bible. How can Noah fit the animals on the ark? Where did Cain get his wife? What about the ape men? What about the millions of years? Wait a minute, the, the, we had to explain the races of people if we go back to Adam and Eve. What about the dinosaurs? You've heard mm -hmm. those questions, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. And the reason they ask those questions is because in this day and age, they're the very topics that cause people to say, well, maybe, maybe the Bible's not true after all. Right. And that's why we give people the answers to help them understand, yes, we can answer those questions. Mm -hmm. and we can defend our faith. And we put together the four answers books with 130 of the top questions people have asked over the past 37 years. Most of the questions you're going to get asked by skeptics to try to stop you believing in the Bible, they're answered in those four books. Wow. And we have many other wow. materials and teaching materials and DVDs. Yep. And you have a quarterly a, magazine, a magazine Answers. Answers. It's one of the top Christian magazines in America. It's received yep. many awards. So they can go and subscribe to this on AnswersInGenesis.org, Answers right? We have a, a, a three-year Bible curriculum that thousands of churches are using. Our VBS program is one of the top in the nation. Oh, by the way, guess what our VBS program is on this year? It's called Ocean Commotion. Oh, I love it. <laughs> because of the flood, right? <laughs> it would have right? been. Exactly. It it's all about Noah's commotion. Ark and the flood, ocean That's, commotion. That is great. Ken, this is absolutely fabulous. And thank you for dedicating your life to helping us answer those difficult questions. Well, that's what and the And the Lord's next generations. Wow, this is great. You're going to want to not only subscribe to this quarterly um, magazine, but you're also going to want to go to AnswersInGenesis.org. And you're going to look at, you want to look into those answers books that Ken's talked to you about. And there's children's books. There's all sorts of resources there. And then you're going to want to go ahead and go online and get your ticket for the ARC because it's going to be packed. I have a feeling and you may miss out, uh, but you're definitely going to do that. Ken, thanks so much for being here with us today. And uh, we're just excited to see what you're going to do next because I know this isn't the end. This is still only the beginning, Oh, right? Noah's Ark's phase one. We have phase two, phase three, including a Tower of Babel, Wall City, First Century Village, oh, lots this of other things. This is going to be amazing. Thank you. Hey, God thank bless you. you, and we look forward to greater things, even more to come. Thank you for joining us as well. Appreciate you being with us. Come back to see us again.